Hello, welcome to Stop Family Farm. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Romans 14, 1. Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. So, just still working to accept everyone. All right, so welcome to the sewing section. First off, um, I know I have like two people that watch just the sewing sections, which is fine, um, but I was going to bring you up to date. Uh, RJ had wind damage, in, and he actually made a little clip for us um, at the farm. I spent the weekend up there helping him. Everything's put back together. Everything's better, you know, just had to get out there and get the work done and so if you want to, if you are interested, you can go back and that clip is up about the middle um, where he, you know, takes a minute to talk. So, all right. Fabric. No, I didn't buy it. Um, so in the sewing section, I did not get anything completed off the, the I need to get the shirts done. And if I got that done, there's like four shirts right there. Boom, boom. Haven't gotten it done. Uh, but I did take the time I could sit on the couch and scroll on my phone and get ideas for, um, Christmas for the office. I have all the bags. I have their birthdays taken care of throughout this year. I am taking the tote today so that some of the ladies can help themselves to gift bags for other people in, in other departments. Um, so yeah, that's going to happen today. And let me get those gone now. Um, the last week in the evening, I would sit and scroll. I did a little bit of knitting, but, or knitting, crocheting, but I am kind of behind on my, uh, uh, club things. So yeah, anyway, that's the other video. So anyway, I sat in the evening and um, did some spinning, some crocheting, and searched on my phone for what I was going to do for birthdays. So, and I want, I want to stash bust. I want to get my fabric down so that I don't have a ton of fabric. Um, it is what it is. It's prepping for the tiny house. And I need to get fabric used up and only purchase for what I'm going to make. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with the scraps. You guys know I can't really um, get rid of it, but I might make something as I go these things to give away or like little craftsy things. I don't know. So um, in my stash, I also had some, let's see if I can find it. Uh, some of this. And this has got the foil in between. It's, kind of like backing, but it is more, it's heat, it's, you use it to make hot mitts, and it's like a, a interfacing, or it's like a batting, and it's got the foil, I don't remember what you call it, it's just the heat resistant one, it's got like, um, the foil stuff in between it, so that hot and cold doesn't transfer, so I had some of that, and then I had different kinds of materials that I had this and that and this um this one right here is the duck canvas it was left over from i don't know how many projects ago and yeah i've been using that one up uh but here's the idea that i came up with. so first i was um just tootling around and this is the first one that i made and it's a, a little basket now, I did not use batting in the middle like they said to. Uh, of course, batting would make it stand up better. I just didn't have any, and I didn't go dig it out. This was the first fabric that was on top of my thing. And I thought, hmm, I could make those. <coughs> so, I did make quite a few. Let's see here. This one this one and I just played at it um I wanted to see how big I could get them 
Um, I had a, I have a 12 by 12 quilting square, and that's what these were made of, with. And so I have these two things on my desk, and one has lollipops in them, and one has pens, and I think I'm going to find something to do, because I made three of these, and I thought they'd be cute on the front of my desk. So, um, yeah, I just, I was playing at this um, first evening I found it, the next evening I kind of sorted through um, stuff, then um, when I was sorting through fabric, I found, and yes, I'm tucking these all in, if not, I'll have them everywhere and they won't, like, stay where I put them. Um, I do think that I am going to take and figure out a formula and I am going to use fabric to cover dollar store boxes for the shelves in the tiny house. I think I'm going to find some cute fabric that, that matches or at least has the same colors in it so that, and then they have those little pop-up square boxes at dollar store. And I think if I make these, um, and put one of those in, it's going to be super sturdy. So, and let's face it, they're like a dollar and a quarter now or whatever. So those would go good on the bathroom shelf to put my um, contacts in and my hairbrushes in and that kind of stuff. So I, I am thinking along the lines of what I'm going to do for tiny house stuff and what I can make in that. But I do know that the 12 inch square ends up well, I think a two and a half inch box. So it might take a big square to do those, but nonetheless, I'm going to attempt, I'm going to see. So um, I'm going to make sure that I find a fabric that I really like. And I'm honestly thinking they're probably going to be solids. And I was thinking maybe a fat quarter, you know, batting fat quarter. And I wouldn't need the batting. I just need the fat quarter make it and then so yeah we'll see how it goes i haven't gotten that far but i did go through and then i made all these little and i thought hmm i don't want to make here's the thing is i don't want to have to put something in these for christmas okay and the whole point of what i was doing was figure out what i was going to make the office for christmas meaning i was going to have to make two to three dozen of them and I was like, hmm, well, what can I do? <laughs> so I used my six inch square and I thought I can make little ones and put candy in there. Now, the only difference between these little ones and the big ones is I did a seam right through the center. I, yeah, you can see that right there and it goes all the way around. And what that does is it holds these down inside. Um, I steamed them and they kind of stayed. I wasn't real happy with it. And so I thought I'm just going to put a stitch through there. So I stitched through every one to make sure that it stays open like I want it to on the little ones. The ones that are made with the six inch square. You can't even get an iron up on these, by the way. So you can't like iron them down. So I have just been finger playing with them, you know, and it's kind of thick, so it doesn't really work, but it does. It, it does good enough. So as I'm playing with them, you can see I don't have the little flaps. Um, push down or stitch down. Now I could hand stitch them. Again, remember I have 20 some to do. Not going to happen. It's too petty. So what I've decided is I'm just going to finger press them like that right before I give them, fill them with candy, put a matching coaster with them and coasters and candy. And this is what I'm going to give for Christmas, a coaster and a candy. So, um, yeah, 
I think is a cute idea. I made this one and I made this one. And you see that the pinks are different size. I don't know what I did, but I didn't get a whole square. I, I don't know. I have several and it was scraps from this one. I don't know. And then there's like a tan on the inside and a tan on the back. And I used in the middle, I used uh, that interfacing that's for heat resistant for hot mitts. Yeah, I had some of that in my stash. So, um, <coughs> and then I have this one. Now on the coasters, some of my X across there, um, and there's its little uh, some I didn't do anything, and then others I did that little X. Oops. My alarm not to talk too long. No, I have to get ready for work here. And my others I did this. They're not perfect, um, just because some of the batting moves on me. So this has one rounded corner, and if you take if I hold it by that corner, it looks good, doesn't it? But you know what? These are for work. They're throwaway washables. Um, if they want them perfect, they can make their own. You know, it's a gift. And I don't mind the little blemishes because this item does what it's supposed to do. So, um, yeah, I am making these. And this is going to be my Christmas gift. And I'm going to start working on them because as we all know redundancy I'm not great at and I will get bored with making these but on the upside I have red ones with hearts and when I ran out of this uh, let's see. this is my so I only had a little bit of this. So for the coasters, I'm using it. For the stiffness of these little guys, because they don't need the batting. This is just two pieces of material and it does just fine. Um, but it's a little thin. You can see the paint through there. So um, what I've decided to do is I have found complementary colors in thicker fabric. And I will make the coaster this and the white like it was. Only I'm going to put purple in between it um, just because it's a thicker cloth. When you make them this small, that extra thickness of cloth is going to be enough to make it stand up. So, because um, you can see you really don't need it, but I want it to be a little bit thicker. So, I've got red and hearts. I've got pink and purple. I've got a um, bunch more of these. It's like a patchwork quilt kind of fabric. Let's see. Then I've got some of these. And what else? Uh, oh, I've got a coaster and stuff for this gold one that's in there. Um, but yeah, I've started to use up, I've got quite a few pink ones and the square ones and the red ones, but it is using this whole stash. Um, I have to make my list and see how many I need to make. Uh, but this is all the coasters and candy baskets. I have three done and I've got to make my list of who's getting this year. Um, I'm going to add, I'm not going to do all the tellers just because, uh, and I might go back and change my mind, but at this point I just need to have a baseline of how many of these I have to make because I know it's just sewing squares, but I have to do, to make 24 of these little sets, I got to do 50 little squares, let alone turn them into the basket or the coaster. So. Yeah, I'm looking at 50 
And if I decide to do more, you know, yeah. So it is what it is, but it is a good stash buster. I'm going to do them and then I'll have them ready by Christmas. This is April. This is late April. So I've got May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So I've got eight months. I will divide it up into a reasonable um, accomplishment. I probably don't have the full eight months because December, I will need them in December. So we'll probably say seven months. Yeah. I'll divide it down to see how many I have to make a week. And then that way I can go. But anyway, while I was stash busting, I don't even know if I addressed this already or if I said something about it. But I'm sitting here. While I was stash busting, I was going through my fabric one evening and I found this. And I don't remember. I think this was for something in RJ's room back when he had a barn room and we lived in town. And he was like three or four. It's before we moved to the country. He was a little bitty guy. And I can't remember what I made with this. I want to say like a rope bag. I used to make him tack for his little bouncy horse. You know, because I lived in town. I didn't have a job. And, you know, we had just moved back here. So... Yeah, but I found it and I don't know where I got it or what it was used for, but I have enough that I should be able to make me another pair of pants. So they're more, it's more of a rust color than the other, um, burgundy It's more of a red rust and it is a thicker double knit, but it's going to work for another pair of pants. I'm going to get to make me another pair of pants without buying anything. I didn't buy anything. It's just I'm stash busting trying to get rid of fabric. Um, then once I get my list and figure out how many of these I've got to make and make sure I've used my stash, I'm going to go through my stash and be realistic about it. And I think I have a plan for all cotton that... Um, <laughs> And this sounds ridiculous, but I'm, it's, I'll make a quilt topper, have a, a ongoing quilt topper with the scraps, but I am just going to piece it haphazardly. I'm not going to cut them into strips or cut them. I am going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to use squares or if I'm just going to use wonky and leave them. I don't know, but. I am going to make a quilt topper. It's not going to have huge pieces in it. This is a scrap, you know, and just build it out. Um, I've done it once before with old scraps of jeans, like old jeans that RJ and Tori wore, and we made a big blanket. RJ has that blanket. Um, Tori didn't like it because it wasn't perfect. <laughs> but literally, I just sewed it until it got big enough, and then I squared it up. And then I stitched batting and backing on it. And the denim one was so heavy. And RJ loves it. He's like, mm -hmm, I can keep warm. He, he likes warm. But I think I'm going to do a cotton version of that for stash busting after I get my stash under control, if that makes sense. So, um, that will be my way of not wasting, but, you know, having my scraps put to use without having a lot of oh, material to store or whatever. So, like I said, this probably 20 years old. I don't know why I still even have it, but, if, well, yeah, I do. It's enough that we can make something else with this. And if I remember right, this was his pillows and his tack, and this is the color he picked out that went with his red door, and he had a, he had a, um, hitching post bed is what we called it. But basically I built it in his bed to give him our, our, his bedroom was small. So to give him the floor space, it was like a, the top bunk only of a bunk bed. And then it had uh, like a little barn stall underneath that we had a reading nook and had his shelves and, um, all that in there. 
and it was really cute. And then his closet door was painted like a barn door. And this was part of his bedding, I believe, um, to make it match the barn door. We matched the paint to this and the, um, like all his pillows and stuff. The accents were this because he had, I want to say cow print bed cover. It was white and black with like Holstein cow print on it. And then it had these as pillows. But anyway, I had made the whole thing. <coughs> it's not something you can go out and buy. So anyway, but I made the bed. He climbed up the ladder at the, at, at the bottom and then had a thing. And it had a rail across the top rolling out. I refused to have a top bunk type bed without him having some way to not fall out. So anyway, I think that's where it came from. I'm not going to be holding on to material for 20 years again. Um, I want to get it cleaned out and I'm slowly getting there. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to get to work on these. I'm going to make my list this week too. It's something that I can do in the evening without having to feel pressure to get stuff done. And this week I am sore from uh, cleaning out the debris and cutting up um, the tree and anyway so my shoulders hurt and all that so I'm just not doing a whole lot but yeah, I am I am doing me if that makes sense so all right I'm gonna get off here I will talk to you guys later and hopefully show you some more stash busting as I go have a great one. Thanks for watching. Bye.